looking for Misa, the true story of the mountain gorilla family who rescued one of their own. Told by Juliana Hatcock, Isabella Hatcock, Gray Hatcock, and Dr. Paula Kahumbu. With photographs by Peter Christie. Almost every day, several hundred Congolese rangers patrol the beautiful forests and jungles of Viroga National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. The vast park, which spills over into Rwanda, is home to about 380 mountain gorillas, just over half of the planet's remaining mountain gorilla population. Innocent Mumburanumwe and Didi Mwanagi are two of the brave rangers who have dedicated their lives to protecting and serving the magnificent and endangered animals. One day in June 2008, Innocent and Didi received some bad news. A baby mountain gorilla named Misa was missing from her family group. They realized that she might be lost in the forest. Innocent and Didi knew that if they could find Misa, she would have a chance of survival. However, Innocent and Didi were not the only one looking for Misa. Misa's father, a fierce silverback named Kabirizi, was already looking for Misa. Misa was less than two years old that June day and still very dependent on her family. Everyone hoped she would be found quickly. Caribizi is the leader of Viruga Park's largest family of mountain gorillas. The family, also known as a troop, lives on the slopes of Mount Mikano. At the time of Misa's disappearance, Caribizi were responsible for protecting Misa's entire family of 31 gorillas. Kabirizi became the head of a family in 1998 with a small troop of only nine gorillas. Its family has but one silverback who must fight and defend his position. Over time, Kabirizi's family grew and grew. It is difficult to hold together such a large family. Kabirizi has become famous among the rangers because of his leadership, skills, and bravery. Nessingina was Misa's mother. Misa would ride on her mother's back clinging to her hair or cradle on her front. Misa would try to play tag, bounce on branches, and wrestle with the other juveniles, but sometimes Misa's mother would hold her back when the place became too rough. The bond between a mother gorilla and her baby is very strong. Like our baby mountain gorillas, Misa would need her mother milk for food until the age of three although she was beginning to learn to eat on her own. One of Kabirizi's jobs is to find feeding areas for his family. Misa and her family spend most of every day moving from place to place on Mount Mikano, eating, playing, and napping. Kabirizi and the adult females Keep a close watch to be sure the group stays together. At night, Misa's mother will make a nest on the ground. She bends and flatten bushes and small trees into a bowl shaped nest. Misa slept close to her mother. Bagani and Kayenga, young male gorilla, keep watch. One day, Bagani and Kayenga will live to become 
silverbacks of their own families, or may even jelly, capirizi. The rangers visit the gorillas almost every day. The gorillas recognize Innocent and Didi and the other rangers. The rangers make friendly gorilla sounds and never threaten the family. Kabirizi watches the rangers as they take pictures and video, draw no brings to keep track of who's who and check to see that the gorillas are healthy. The gorillas sometimes play tricks on the rangers such as stealing their hats. One of the rangers' jobs is to protect the gorillas from people who may harm them. People call protectors set traps for other animals that gorillas can get caught in by mistake. Other people illegally cut down the forest to grow food for their families and make jungle for food. And sometimes visitors to the mountain want to watch the gorillas for a long time, but one hour is the limit so that the gorillas do not catch human diseases like measles and the flu. The ranger enforce the laws that protect gorillas and they carry guns in case they need to defend the gorillas from harm. Mountain gorillas families usually have a peaceful life. That's what about to gen for Caribizi and Pichu. When the rangers heard that measles were missing, they rushed up the mountain for their camp. They could not find Caribizi and his family. The bamboo forest seemed unnaturally quiet. It was clear that something frightening had happened. A silverback's protective sense is very strong. Kabirizi had left his family high into the mountains to hide. When they were protected, he left his group and began looking for Misa and the Sinjuna. He probably looked into the out-of-the-way feeding areas that in quiet hiding places. We will never know exactly where his shirts took him. Slowly, Kabirizi's family came out of hiding. Very carefully, the rangers identified them and called the family members. But little Misa and her mother, Lesinjina, were still missing, and Kabirizi had not yet returned. The rangers shot up and down the mountain, making soft, reassuring Godzilla noises, but they didn't find a trace of the missing mother and baby. After several days, Innocent discovered that Kabirizi had returned. He heard raised, but there was no sign of Misa. Then, in the quiet afternoon at nap time, there was a rustle behind a tree. Innocent slowly turned his head and saw a tiny eye look up at him through the leaves. He leaned in closer and recognized the unmistakable nose spring. This little eyes belong to Misa. He has sore. Kabirizi has found Misa and brought her home. Sadly, Lesinjina was still missing. Upon her return, Misa was very shy and timid, and she was very, very hungry. She was afraid of the ranger and hid behind the bigger gorillas. The rangers were worried. Misa need, needed a protector and teacher. They were ha happy to see that Tumaini, Misa's big sister, were taking care of Misa. A baby gorilla missed its mother for nourishment and support. And most of the time, other family members do not substitute for the mother. But the rangers watched at Tumani carry Misa around and grunted softly to soothe her. Misa's half-brother, Mivumbi, helped Tumani. 
when Misa was left alone, she cried, ran away to many or he would be would pick her up. But the rangers worried that Misa was not getting enough to eat because she seemed weak and acted sick. The skin of her hands had turned bright red and had peeled and her hair was beginning to fall out. She was in pain and started to have difficulty handling the rough bamboo she was trying to eat. Innocent asked Dr. Chakwis, a guerrilla veterinarian, to observe Misa. Dr. Chakwis watched her with the family and also watched her try to eat. He had a hard decision to make. Would Misa learn to feed herself so she could become healthy and strong? If not, she would have to go to a hospital for sick and orphan gorillas. Dr. Jacquez made the call. Let her continue to learn to eat the leaves from the forest. There is better medicines for her here with her family than in a gorilla orphanage. She will heal faster if she is here. Over the next several weeks, Misa did get better. Innocent and Didi noticed that Misa had more energy. She was eating a lot more bamboo and her hair was growing back. They saw that Misa could live to Mani and Mivumbi for short periods of time. Misa seemed to be gaining confidence and were learning how to trust. She was even starting to let Innocent and Didi get close to her. Today, Misa seemed to be her happy self, even without her mother, Nessigina, for neither Kabirizi, Didi, nor Innocent was able to fight. Misa plays and stumbles with the other young gorillas. She lives over vines and climbs trees. She even sneak up on Mivumbi and surprise him. It is easy to believe that the members of Kabirizi's families are joyful too. One of their youngest members has survived and is now healthy and happy. Misa will grow up with her family. She will continue to learn from Tumaini and Mivumbi. Kabirizi will carefully watch over his whole troop, but we can be sure that he will always keep an extra careful eyes on Misa, the leader lost gorillas he rescued and brought home.